Jared Bernstein, who's a member of President Biden's Council of Economic uh, Advisors, joins us now. Very good afternoon to you, uh, Jared. Very interesting there, the executive order signing and the discussion uh, around it, uh, during which the president, in fact, said the previous administration didn't take Buy America seriously enough. Uh, is that overall a, a admission that uh, President Trump's uh, trade policy, uh, particularly as it relates to some countries like China, the gist of it, at least, was in the right place? Certainly, one of the things that President Trump gets credit for is recognizing that lots of people and places were left behind by globalization. I mean, this is something that Joe Biden has uh, talked about and uh, campaigned on for uh, as long as he's been uh, a politician, uh, as long as I've known him. And he's always uh, had uh, a, I think, very realistic view of both the upsides and the downsides of global trade flows. Now, we know these increased flows. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a former CNBC contributor, so I, I can tell you that I know from markets' perspective mm -hmm. that these increased trade flows are very important to our economy. They increase the supply of goods and services. They put downward pressure on prices. But we also know, and I think economists and many politicians haven't been as upfront about this as they should, that they've left many people and communities behind, that they've been extremely problematic for our manufacturing sector. The problem with the Trump administration is not only did they not deliver on Buy American, their trade policy was actively a huge negative for the manufacturing sector, which was ac actually in a recession before the pandemic hit. So what you saw today in this executive order was some real teeth, some real systematic approaches to closing some of the Buy American loopholes and getting this back on track. So, Jared, uh, that said, will you accept if there are some circles that criticize uh, you and the president uh, overall for being xenophobic in light of this? In, in December 2019, in The New York Times, you wrote, quote, Democrats must link Mr. Trump's trade agenda to his racism and xenophobia. They should emphasize that in Mr. Trump's worldview, every import is an insult to him and every trading partner is a villain trying to rip us off. Thus, tariffs and walls must be erected to protect us from the outside world. What's your, what's your take on how President Biden's executive what's order today is different? What I said? <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's, uh, I tried to make a nuanced uh, distinction there. And let me uh, actually appreciate the chance to, uh, to underscore it. You can't treat imports and exports as a scorecard. You can't treat the, the trade deficit as a scorecard. And in fact, one of the points I just made is that trade flows are an important advance in economies across the world. They're important for us. They're important for our trading partners. They're important for developing economies. Uh, however, what you can't ignore is the impact of increased trade flows, and particularly in the U.S. case, the persistent uh, and large and economically important trade deficits, on people who have been hurt by them. That means you have to have policies that look at capital flows. That means you have to have buy American policies. That means you have to, you know, look at your trade agreements and making sure. And this again is an old. This is not new for Joe Biden. Uh, you have to make sure that when you're uh, when you're when you're considering trade policy, whether it's a trade agreement or buy American, that the right people are at the table, not just the the lobbyists, not just the the the, the big connected folks who always dominate that table, but labor, consumers, environmentalists. They need to be at the table as well, and that is a Joe Biden value that you're going to see uh, as this administration moves forward. And you've already seen it, by the way, in the buy American uh, executive order. Jared, it's Sarah. One thing I wanted to follow up on that the president mentioned as part of this order is updating the federal fleet, which I thought was interesting. All the cars that the government owns are going to become EVs, he said. They're going to be made in the U.S. We saw Ford and GM stock come off the lows on this. What can you tell us about this fleet? How many cars is that exactly, and, and which companies are you going to buy from? It's a good question, and I don't have the answer to those precise uh, questions, but I will certainly look for them. Uh, this is very. Th this is one of those intersections that I really love, though, about uh, the kind of policy that we're trying to bring to the table: clean energy, manufacturing policy, buy American, good jobs for the American people, particularly in parts and places of the country that have been left behind. This is doing well by doing good. It should be great politics. It's great economics. And uh, I think it's very strong intersection of those policy spaces. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.